Hello everyone. I was recently asked uh, how to connect two networks together using two routers and a LAN cable. So as you can see, here's the configuration that I used. And uh, thank you very much to Asa Laos for ask, asking the question. Basically, this is my video response to that question. And so let's go through what I'm gonna do here. Uh, we've got a primary router that's connected to the internet. It's a uh, Netgear WNR, WRN 2000 version three. And the main router just needs to be a normal uh, Wi-Fi router. It doesn't even have to be a Wi-Fi router. It just needs to be a router. And this one is a Wi-Fi one, but a normal router will do without Wi-Fi. Now, the main router is using the stock firmware. In other words, the software that came inside it with uh, out of the box. Uh, and DHCP is enabled on it. Uh, I upgraded the firmware to the latest version from Netgear, but it's still Netgear stock firmware. So I'm using that to emulate a standard everyday home network or home uh, router. And uh, again, it needs to have DHCP enabled, but usually that's enabled right out of the box. So you probably won't have to do anything to your uh, main router. Now, I'm going to connect it to another router using a LAN cable instead. Um, I showed, I had a video where I showed uh, that you can do that with Wi-Fi, but it's, I'm just using a standard LAN cable here uh, or a patch cable, um, you know, basically an RJ45, uh, you know, Cat 5E cable. And what I'm going to do is connect it to a TP-Link WRA41N. Now that's a specific router. The, the, why it's specific is because it runs the DDWRT uh, third-party software, which enables it to be a, a bridge really nicely uh, for this purpose. So, and it's a very cheap router too. It's under $26, I believe. If you want uh, to see that router or buy that router at Amazon, I'll put a link for it here in the, in the video description below. And uh, also anything else that uh, you know may need a link for in here, including DDWRT, uh, will be in the video description below. Um, so, reason why I'm using the third-party software on the secondary router is because it enables it to bridge to the other router. Now, you may be able to do it with stock firmware and a different uh, router, but I have no idea how you're going to do it. I know how you're going to do it with this router, and I know how you're going to do it with the DDWRT firmware. And uh, revision I'm using here, just in case anybody's wondering, it's R30880. Uh, which is the latest beta for, uh, version for this router it works perfectly well so basically that's the introduction to what i'm going to do here um, you can use other routers it doesn't have to be a, a netgear wrn 2000 you can use any basic stock uh, router that's running dhcp no problem but the secondary router uh, has to at least be running DDWRT and I strongly suggest that you use the WRA41N or a faster router than that if you have it as long as it runs the DDWRT software. Uh, if you don't know what that is do a little research on it and uh, you know uh, get yourself acquainted to it. I will have a link to the DDWRT website and the let download for this uh, firmware in the video description as well. And I have many videos on how to install it on this uh, router and do various things with it. So basically, this is that's the breakdown of what I'm going to do here in this video. Next thing I'm going to do is show you how to uh, do the primary uh, physical connection to this router to configure it correctly to plug into your main router. So first, we're going to plug it in uh, directly to your laptop or PC, configure it, and then we're going to uh, plug it into your network and have it extend it. All right, so here we have a laptop that I'm going to be using to connect to the router. And, uh, you know, if you don't have a laptop, you can use a PC. Basically, you need something with a LAN uh, connection on it or a LAN port on it. Mine has one right there. And what I'm going to use is the patch cable that came with the router. And I'm going to plug one end of the patch cable into the actual uh, laptop, like so. And the other side of the cable is going to go into one of the, the LAN ports, not the blue port, one of the yellow ports. Those are the LAN ports. The blue port is the WAN port or the internet port where your modem would be connecting. So it doesn't matter which one you choose. I chose number one here. But again, patch cable to one of the LAN ports, uh, yellow ports on this router, maybe different color on your router, but make sure they're LAN ports. And then the other uh, side plugged into the uh, laptop or your uh, desktop PC uh, port, LAN port. And then we're gonna go from here and I'll show you how to configure 
your network on your uh, PC or laptop and uh, how to connect to this router and configure it correctly. We've got that hooked up correctly now to the computer and this is the configuration that we're going to end up with here on the screen uh, as far as uh, network configuration goes uh, in the end. So basically we're the, the primary router is going to be on a, a, the IP address 192.168.1.1 and the secondary is going to be on 192.168.1.2. Now, uh, the rest is, you know, pretty standard stuff. If your router is on a different IP address, like say 0.1, then you need to change. You'll need to change these values from uh, 1.1 to 0.1 here, and from 1.2 here to uh, 0.2, and uh, 0.1 here at the bottom. So uh, it depends on which where it is. You have to know those numbers. Now, if you don't know those numbers, uh, you know log into your router and find them out it'll tell you tell them to you also usually the ip address of your primary router is your gateway as well so if you know your gateway ip you probably know your your, your router's ip and vice versa so uh we got to configure this router first though to uh connect to the uh primary router so the secondary tp link router you can't just plug these two things together because uh, if they're on the same IP address, like if they're both on 192.168.1.1, they're going to create an IP conf conflict and your network's going to go down because basically you can't have two routers or one of them is going to be shut off. Uh, you can't have two network devices on the same IP address. They conflict and that creates havoc. So now that we have this uh, router plugged into our uh, laptop or, or PC, we're going to go into the, the configuration, the network configuration on that PC to configure it, to, to talk to it correctly so that we can configure it and uh, set it up to do this bridge. So first thing we're going to do, no, not go there. Um, let me minimize this out of the way. We're, go down to your network icon here. Uh, mine has got a wireless icon here. Right click it, choose open and network sharing center. Then we're going to go to change, uh, sorry, adapter settings here, change adapter settings, click on that. And you'll see all your adapters. I have a Wi-Fi adapter, an Ethernet adapter, a private internet access adapter, blah, blah, blah. Uh, only two of these matter. If you have Wi-Fi, you're going to want to uh, disable that. So right click it and choose disable. We'll come back here and uh, just, uh, you know, enable all this stuff when we're done. Uh, but right now we want to disable that because you don't want to be uh, connected to any other computer or any other router than the one you're supposed to be connected to right now. So I'm going to hit disable on that and it's grayed out. And now I have two Ethernet connections. One of them is the actual one I need. You'll see there's a red X on one and a cable on the other. So the cable one is the one that we're connected to. And if you really want to see which one it is that you're connected to, just disconnect the cable either from the router or from your PC. And you'll see that it's state changes. I just disconnected it. You see now it's got a red X. I'm going to reconnect it and there it's back to connect it. So I'm going to right click that and we're going to go to properties. Now we're going to hard code an IP address into this. So double click on internet protocol version 4 uh, parentheses TCP forward slash IPv4 and open that up. Now by default you should have this set to uh, obtain IP address automatically and obtain DNS server address automatically. Those are the Windows defaults. So, uh, you know, if you don't find that, if you find other IP addresses in here or a different configuration, make sure you note it or take a picture of it or somehow uh, write it down so that you can put it back to the way it was uh, when, you, when you started because this has to be modified yeah, in a specific way here. So. Uh, as again, as we're using uh, the IP addresses I showed on that diagram originally, uh, here we're going to put 192.168.1. I don't know 15, and make sure it's an IP address that is not on your network, uh, but it is on the right network. As you can see here, it's on the 192.168.1 network. So uh, then click on the next box, and it should auto populate. Now the rest of this stuff you don't need to put in. Uh, it's actually optional, but I'm going to put it in anyway. Uh, gateway will be 192.168.1.1, which is the same IP address as the uh, primary router. And then the DNS server here, you put whatever, um, you can put the primary router in there. So 192.168.1.1. Or uh, if you wish, you can use uh, 
Google's DNS, which I like, uh, which is 8.8.8.8. All right, up to you. Here, we're gonna click OK. And uh, now our, our network uh, uh, port or card is uh, correctly configured to talk to this router. Next, we're gonna open up uh, the browser again. And here, we're gonna go to uh, uh, 192.168.1.1. Now, I've reset the router to basically make it um, the default configuration you would find when you first install DDWRT. If you don't know how to uh, reset the router, all you need to do is hold down the reset button for five seconds or so, a little longer, and it will reset all the values to the default that you get when you first install the, the firmware. So uh, let's go here. Let's see if my router is ready. It may not be, let's try it. Now it's still rebooting there after resetting it. Shouldn't take too long though. Let's try that again. Now notice the number I'm going to is 192.168.1.1. Now uh, that would, you know, by default, a lot, your your home router may have that same number. That's why we're connecting it at a separate time. There we go. It's come back up. So go to the IP address of your prime of, of the router of this router, which would be 192.168.1.1. And here we're going to have to put in the admin uh, password and stuff. So I'm just going to use admin all the way through here. Do not do this at home uh, because that is the first, basically the first password any hacker is going to try. So it's here it's just admin, admin, admin. But uh, use something different and unique. So I've changed the password. Now we're into the router. Now we need to go into the setup over here, the setup tab. Of course, it's going to ask us for the password again. So admin min we'll go in and then in in the wan setup is the first thing we're going to deal with so here you see this says connection type uh automatic uh, sorry automatic dhcp right well we don't want that we want to turn that off so we're going to disable that and i'll show you why that's cool because look at you know let's go back to the uh, automatic dhcp here okay and you see all these settings, right? But we don't want this. We're not going to be using it for that. We're going to we're going to disable it. And uh, what that's going to do is give us an extra port on the router. Uh, basically, the blue port on the router will become the connection port, leaving the other four open for you to plug anything you want into, which is better than most routers. Usually, you're going to have to plug one thing into the to the uh, LAN ports, and that eats up one of the LAN ports, and leaving you with three in this case. Uh, well, with this one, this configuration I'm showing you here, you'll have four LAN ports uh, available and free to connect whatever you want to it. So, connection type, WAN connection disabled. I uh, give the router a proper name. Let's call it extension or LAN extension. And you want to do that just so that you don't get confused. Or if you're running two DDWRT uh, routers on your network, like the primary is DDWRT, then you know which one you're dealing with. You don't, you know, accidentally do something like flash the wrong firmware into it or configure it incorrectly. So there we go. We got that setting. And you see the local IP address here is 1.1. Well, we want to change that to something other than 1.1. I'm just going to change it to 1.2 and uh, leave the rest alone because uh, basically, if we left it on 1.1 and plugged it into the other router, we could create that conflict I was talking about. So down to the DHCP here, we already have a DHCP server. We're gonna be using the one on the primary router. So we wanna uh, disable this. So here you have the uh, disable button. And then uh, after you've done that, we're gonna hit apply settings. Okay, the, the one thing that happened here, sorry, um, when you actually change the IP address of the router, it's gonna be showing up somewhere else. So as soon as you hit save, it's gonna to go to the number, to the IP you put in there, which is 192.168.1.2. So we have to change that here to 1.2 in the address bar. Now we're back into the router. Again, it's gonna ask us to log into it again. So we'll, we'll do that. There we go and just verify that all those settings are right. And I will put a router sim, um, a, a 
basically a copy of all these settings on my website and i'll put the link to that router sim in the video description below with the, the amazon links and everything else uh, so that you can verify you've got it set right so those are the the uh, basic setup and wan setup uh, connection setup for that router now we're going to go to wireless because you may want to enable the wireless and the wireless is automatically set here uh, you can change it to whatever you wish but i'm just going to leave it on the defaults it's up to you and here you want to give it a unique name don't give it the same uh ssid network uh, to, uh sorry the ssid name that you have on your primary the primary reason is if you have two of the same names um, your devices are not going to know which one to connect to it won't necessarily connect to the strongest one it'll connect to the uh, device that answers the call first so maybe your weak router it can actually connect to your weak router with one bar of, of service maybe and if it responds first it'll connect to that first and then you'll be connected slowly to the other router and have to disconnect all that stuff it's a it's a real pain so the, the trick here is to name it something else so that you know which uh, router you're connected to just by looking at your uh, ssid or, or your uh, network uh, connection id at the bottom right so Let's change this to LAN Connect. Let's call it that. LAN. Let's call it LAN Con. There we go. And we're going to hit Apply Settings here. And once this is done setting it, we're going to set the wireless security over here because by default it's turned off. So we want wireless security. I use the WPA Personal Mixed. Up to you what you choose here. Not sure why that happened. Let's go back. Okay, wireless, wireless security. Yeah, there's mixed. And I changed the algorithms to both uh, T TKIP and e AES. I find this is the most, basically the most compatible uh, setting for this. And here you're gonna put in a, a username or uh, sorry, a password for your, the, your network. Of course, I'm just gonna use admin admin again. Again, warn you against using that. I'm just using it because it's easy and fast here. You know, use something unique and harder to figure out than admin admin. Okay, save the settings. I hit apply and then I hit saved. And so let's verify we, th those uh, settings are, are in there. Looks like they are. Over here to wireless security. It's good too. So at this point, Everything, I verified everything is set up. That's it for the configuration of the secondary router. Now, uh, we've done that. Now, the next thing we're going to need to do is go back to our network here. Uh, so, right click your network icon, open up Network and Sharing Center, go to Change Adapter Settings, and the Ethernet Connector, right click it and choose Properties. Double click the uh, Internet Protocol version 4. And set this back to obtain IP address automatically, obtain DNS server address automatically, and hit OK and OK. And that will take it back to the regular setting. Now, we're going to close this all off. And uh, at this point, we're ready to connect the router, uh, the secondary router, to the primary router to, to establish the bridge. So I'm going to show you what that physical connection looks like uh, and where to plug things in to get the, this to work correctly. Here we have the two routers we'll be using. Uh, this is the Netgear, and this is the uh, TP-Link, uh, WR841N. And, uh, you know, basically what we have is the power going to the router, the primary router. This is uh, the white cables going into the internet port on the primary router, and that goes to the modem, which then goes to the internet. And what we want to do is we want to connect a cable between the uh, TP-Link and uh, your primary, whatever it is, doesn't really matter but uh, you know in my case this is what it is uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to connect the wire to the blue port which is the WAN port or the internet port uh, wide area network and plug it in there and then we're going to take that port uh, sorry that cable and plug it into one of the LAN ports on the actual uh, net gear so like that so basically internet or WAN on, on the uh, secondary to the uh, LAN on the primary, just like that. And that's correctly uh, configured. The one thing you notice here is that you still have four 
uh, LAN ports here on the back of this motor on the back of this router to connect four items if you wish uh, to this uh, router as well and it will you know share basically connect the, these those devices you plug into this router to the the uh, device that's plugged into this router real nice that's how you make a bridge so we've got the cable between the two of them together at this point and uh, we've got everything configured correctly so at this point we should be able to see uh, the Wi-Fi connection on this uh, on the internet uh, sorry on the uh, laptop as well we should be able to connect to it with a LAN cable and see the uh, internet flowing through it so I'm going to show you that next I've got the cable plugged into the uh, laptop and uh, from the uh, secondary router uh, so we'll take a look and see what we find there so at this point uh, let's go to the network icon right click it and open uh, network and sharing center and you can see connection there it says ethernet so I'm going to just click on that and we'll look at the details and as you can see it gives me a number 192.168.1.100. I get that automatically from DHCP. So we know that the DHCP server in the other router is serving IP addresses to this router because otherwise we wouldn't get one. So that's a cool thing. Um, let's go take a look. And let's see, it says access type internet. So we're getting internet through that connection. Perfect. So let's test that out here. Let's open up uh, uh, my, okay, well, this is my uh, video, no, my video, but my uh, router itself. And I can connect to that 192.168.1.2 router, which is the DDWRT. And I can also connect here. I should be able to connect to the other router. Yeah, looks like it will go there. So let's go into that. Okay, this is a Netgear router. And as you can see, Obviously, I can connect to both of them using the LAN cable. Okay, so perfect. Exactly what's supposed to be happening. Uh, you know, it's working. It's on the internet. Uh, if I go to Google here, I should be able to. Those are all internal, so let's go Google. Boom. So everything's working. Perfect. So. Right now, I'm surfing through the secondary router without any issue at all. Uh, this, the primary router is giving me an IP address through a DHCP. Perfect, just the way we want. Ah, but what about wireless, right? Let's, go, let's check that out. So I'm going to disconnect the uh, uh, LAN cable. And that should change my LAN connection uh, status down here. Let's right-click that, open the network and sharing center again. I have it open here. And let's go to change adapter settings. And... Remember, we turned off the Wi-Fi here. So we're turning the Wi-Fi back on here. So right-click it, choose Enable. Wi-Fi is connected. Actually, Wi-Fi is enabled. Let's go take a look at uh, the networks available here. And you can see there DD-WRT LANCON, which is what we actually set up on that secondary router. So let's click Connect on that. And here we're going to put the password. and let it uh, connect. All right, it says verified. It says, sorry, it says connected and secured, land.com, perfect. And uh, let's see if we can do a Google search here. How about uh, Patriots Jets game? Let's get the score on that. So we learn how to spell. There we are. So now through Wi-Fi on the secondary router, we've got uh, connection, perfect exactly what we wanted so at this point we have let's take a look here this configuration working perfectly so internet going through the netgear router connected through a LAN cable to the secondary router secondary router through wi-fi to my laptop perfect and i tested out this configuration as well the uh, LAN cable connected to my laptop worked perfectly so that's how you create a hardwire bridge between a stock router or stock uh, Wi-Fi router. It doesn't need to be Wi-Fi. It could actually be a non-Wi-Fi router and a uh, TP-Link WR841N running DDWRT. It needs to have the DDWRT firmware in it. So that's it. So hopefully that helped you out. Uh, you know, Asa, thank you for asking. And... Uh, 
you know if you like this video somewhere on the screen here there'll be uh, a picture of me that you can click on to subscribe to my uh, uh, channel and uh, if you like this video do me a favor you gotta click on the like button or the like thumbs up button right down here at the bottom right and give me a thumbs up uh, it helps my video channel and my videos and I appreciate uh, that greatly thank you very much for your time thank you for watching and uh, if you have any questions just put them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer uh, as best I can